Binge the full week of The Ray Taylor Show ad-free over at Patreon.com slash Inspired Disorder. What you manifest in your mind, you can bring to reality. Ted Lasso, Season 2, Episode 6, The Signal, is the newest episode out. And this one begins with AFC Richmond on a four-game winning streak. Things are going good now with Roy as one of the coaches. Uh, and they are heading into a quarterfinals. Yes, against a- or FA Cup quarterfinals against uh, Tottenham Hotspur. Uh, but yeah, in this one, obviously they're doing well, but uh, Roy is uh, avoiding giving any coaching advice to Jamie. They still have you know, a rift from from back when Roy was part of the team. Uh, you have uh, Rebecca enjoying herself with a little boy toy that she's she's picked up off of banter, and uh, or I believe off of banter. Who knows where they they met or uh, she uh, picked him up or whatever. Um, but her mom shows up to visit, so it's our first time seeing Rebecca's mom, and uh, we're also seeing Coach Beard. Uh, is back with his old girlfriend, Jane. Uh, and the Diamond Dogs are concerned. Uh, Higgins is concerned, anyway, and thinks that she is not a good fit for Coach Beard. He doesn't think sh- that she's a very good person uh, or just a toxic person, unhealthy partner, whatever it is. Uh, the rest of the Diamond Dogs disagree. They say that uh, telling your friends your true feelings about their partner can ruin the friendship. Uh, my personal experience with that is depends on your friendship, because uh, there's definitely friends I have been vocal about. Uh, they they didn't necessarily listen to me either, uh, but eventually it, it just be after after more than a decade of living with a toxic person, they finally find out that. Uh, I was right. They heed my advice many, many years later. Uh, but that, is, you know, I, I don't have a problem personally telling friends uh, that I think they're in a bad relationship, whether it's with a partner or with a family member. Uh, I'm not close with any family members, so I've never had the, uh, the thought of, you know, having to approach a family member uh, like a parent and telling them they're in an unhealthy relationship. Uh, but that's also what uh, Rebecca is dealing with because her mom is in town because uh, her her mom says she's going to leave her dad, uh, which is something that happens every few years, apparently. Um, and it is not really it's it's a, a back and forth that Rebecca wishes she could talk to her mom about and tell her to just leave the man. But I don't know, people. People hate change, no matter what it is, whether it's a relationship, whether it's the place you live, whether it's the job you have, whether it's the hobbies you have, your friends, like people don't want to change. They would rather stay in a toxic situation than go through the hassle of changing themselves, changing their life, alter their their existence in any way to to kind of make a life that's better than the one they're living. So I can understand that. I mean, my experience is, you know, I'll give my advice on stuff, but it's so rare that people ever take advice. When it comes to having to make big changes in their life to get the results that they want, uh, they're unwilling to do it. Uh, but anyway, that's kind of a, a, th- a through line through this this episode is people in bad situations or toxic situations and not changing. Um, similarly to Ted, Ted is so unwilling to to deal and cope with the the end of his marriage and his big life changes, his the things that have happened to him. He's just kind of ignoring those things despite the fact that somebody like Sharon is at his disposal somebody who's amazing clearly like unrealistically accurate and effective at at helping the mental 
the mental aspect of players. Um, so, yeah, I thought this was the best episode of the season. This one was also written by Roy Kent. Uh, Brett Goldstein, uh, the actor who plays Roy Kent, wrote this episode, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, so <clears throat> you have Jamie, who's playing mediocre because he's playing team sports, and Roy finally, like, Jamie hasn't been coached by Roy, and Roy finally, you know, Jamie gets some advice from Keeley. Just to agree with everything he has to say, um, which that's a funny scene, you know, ha seeing Jamie have to like, like Roy knows what Jamie's doing. It's a thing where it's like Jamie is doing this thing to try and manipulate Roy. Roy sees it, so then he's using it to his, his advantage to, you know, have uh, talk shit about Jamie and Jamie, you know, knowing that he has to agree with Roy. Uh, acquiesces and it's a funny scene because it's agreeable Jamie's hair is ridiculous um, but Roy tells him what he needs to hear it's like you are a superstar the the superpower you have is being a prick and when you play team ball which is good to do most of the time we're not getting that that selfishness that a superstar needs to have to really take over a team and really push their team over, over that line. Um, so Roy says, like, listen, I'll give you a signal. You'll know what the signal is. And that's when you need to, to become the true Jamie, the prick, the, the true prick that, that Jamie Tart can be. And uh, it's a fun signal. That's a, it's a fun moment in the, in the game where they're, they're playing – and he gets the signal, which is all four coaches flipping him the bird, uh, which is perfect, you know. And it, it works, obviously. So they, they figured out another kind of way to improve the team overall, especially leading into this quarterfinals. Um, but, yeah, so Roy just proving himself more so as a coach, especially being able to communicate with individual players, uh, there's aspects of him like, you know, obviously understanding the game far more than Coach Beard and Ted Lasso could. Um, but with the experience that comes from being a player, which is something that Nate doesn't have. Uh, but Nate has an amazing point in this in this episode as well. You have you have during that game where, you know, they're they're down, you know, in in a kerfuffle. The the other team scores. And because Ted leaves, he has a panic attack again uh, during the game. And because of that, the other team scores. Um, and the, the coach, coaching staff, Coach Beard and Roy, they're, they're, like, confused. They don't know what to do next, right? They, they have options. They don't know which one to go with. And in a moment of clarity, Nate steps up to the steps up to the steps up to the mound to use another sports reference, and uh, takes over and uh, has a great strategy in order to win. It's like we'll we'll just play defense, and it's the first team that that messes up, then then we'll get that. Like it, it's great. It's a moment where Nate really steps up and really like shows that he can be a leader of the team which is going to be interesting. Like, I am scared that Nate is going to leave. It seems like he could easily leave. Like, the fact that he's showing himself to be a leader, you know, he knows the sport, he's, he's took over the team when the other two coaches didn't know what to do exactly. Um, so I could see another team potentially poaching him or, uh, yeah, you know, taking him from AFC Richmond. Um, I, you know, maybe this season, maybe things tend to move fast. A little over four years ago, I started the many faces. It's an ongoing series of abstract ink portraits. Each piece is improvised. Each piece is released daily. Start collecting now. Head on over to inspiredisorder.com slash TMF. That stands for The Many Faces. And save yourself 25% when you use coupon code 
R T S. That stands for the Ray Taylor show, because that's what you're listening to. And I love you. So I want you to save 25% when you use that coupon code, head on over to inspiredisordercom slash T M F and use coupon code R T S to save 25%. When you start collecting one of over 1,600 original ink paintings by myself, I made them. Support me. I love you. Back to the show. By the next episode, Nate could be gone for all I know. It didn't seem like that because at the end of the episode, Roy gives Nate some love, which is something that Nate earlier in the episode said that he wished he would get some kind of positive feedback from Roy. Um, and after Nate stepped up, you know, clear, and he's like scrolling through all the positive comments on his, his phone, you know, Roy gives him some love, gives him some respect, uh, which is great, which is great. So I'm hoping Nate stays because I do love Nate. He's such a great addition to that team. I I mean, actor wise, I really enjoy his performance, but his character is really sweet. And like, you know, he's, he's kind of gained some, some variations to, to who similarly, to Jamie in a lot of ways, you know, Nate is finding his prick. Like he, he became, he understood how to become a prick in order to roast his team and really be brutally honest with his team. But he's also found that kind of gray area where Jamie in a lot of ways is finding that kind of balance between being a team player and being a prick. Nate is finding his balance between being just a polite, timid guy and being assertive and, you know, voicing his opinion on things. Uh, so I enjoy both of their grows, Nate and, and, uh, and um, Jamie. Uh, so Ted has another panic attack, right? You see his hands, you know, start to do the thing like they did in the, the karaoke scene from a uh, past episode. Um, and he goes storming off the fil- field. Rebecca sees this, and she knows Ted, right? She knows what he's going through. So she sets out to go look for him. She can't find him. Uh, team bursts in. They win. They're celebrating. Yeehaw. Everything's great. Um, Nate pulled through, you know, ended up being the, the coach they needed uh, when they needed him. Um, and then, uh see, what else? You see, you finally see which I was hoping was not going to be the case. I was scared that the person that Rebecca was flirting with on banter was potentially Ted. Turns out it's one that actually makes more sense. And the person that she's chatting with doesn't know that he's chatting with her, but that person happens to be Sam. So we see who she's been flirting with on banter. um, and, And you see the other side of it, which... I kind of enjoy they've had interactions where Sam's, you know, been super polite and and just sweet guy. Obviously, there's an age difference, but I don't have a problem if people are attracted to each other and it's legal and they people fit. It's so hard to find a fit like to act and to have like some kind of specific raid age restrictions. Like you can only date somebody who's your age. I mean, if it fits, it fits. And so, you know, I, I wouldn't mind seeing that. And it's a flip. You know, it's the older woman with the younger man. Um, but Sam's just such a sweet guy. And Rebecca is an awesome person. So, like, I'm sure there'll be confusion and drama. Maybe they hook up and it, it's not a fit in real life. Uh, but I enjoy that aspect of it. I enjoy that far more than if it was Ted was the one that was... Because they could easily, I could see them getting together. I mean, she really, she understands Ted, and I think they're good friends. And I could see that developing into a relationship potentially, but not through a dating app. So I'm happy that it's Sam and not Ted. Um, And uh, you find Ted at the end, Sharon, you know, as the team's celebrating, Sharon comes in, you know, sees them and they all invite her out to drink she's like yeah i'll be i'll be out there as soon as i'm done with my work she goes to her office and you see ted curled up on her couch disheveled not doing well uh and asks sharon for help finally finally i mean it was it's just a matter of time you know ted 
like a lot of Americans are are in denial that they're dealing with trauma and that they need help. I think the majority of issues in this country, aside from bad education, is the fact that people ignore trauma uh, and and live under the idea that you should just tough things out and just deal with it instead of actually dealing with it. Uh, but yeah, so Ted finally asked for help, and it, it's a beautiful episode. You know, I literally clapped at the end of it. Because you get to see, like, heart, you get to see comedy, you get to see all the different stuff, and it, it's a lot of fun. The team's doing well. Everything's starting to click. Everybody's kind of rising to the occasion. You got Nate rising to the occasion. You got the addition of Roy doing good. Um, Coach Beard, it's kind of interesting. He's the only character that, where it doesn't feel like he's had an episode. So maybe there's going to be a Coach Beard episode coming up with his relationship because one of the things with his relationship is that he finds out that she's a, a huge QAnon conspiracy. It's like a very short throwaway line, but he says she, she, she's full on QAnon, which I don't understand people that are in relationships. Like you, you, you not feeling like that's a big issue in a relationship is basically you being okay with, like, delusion. Like, there's clips, all these clips of, like, these couples, these, these husband and wives, and it's like the wife is this, like, aggressively racist person, right? And you see the husband quiet, trying to quiet her down, like, trying to trying to end the situation like he clearly knows she's racist like there's a point in that relationship where he was completely fine like that the fact that she was overtly racist wasn't a big enough problem for him so i don't have like the fact that coach beard is with this QAnon lady like i will have less sympathy for him when things start going bad like if 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 an upcoming episode is her flying to Washington D.C. to participate in the January sixth insurrection, like if that's part of, which I don't think it would be. I don't think the show would get that political. But it's like, and then he gets arrested. Like I don't wouldn't have that much sympathy. It's like, well, you knew getting into this what type of person she was. So that's like that's like a, a character trait that you seem to be okay with. Um, but it'll be interesting. I would love to see a Coach Beard episode. We've had we've had episodes with so many of the big characters. Like Nate had a, a, a sub, Nate's had a lot of substantial. Roy has had substantial stuff. Keely, Rebecca, like all the main ones. And for whatever reason, there's Coach Beard has kind of just been just in the periphery, right? Involved with things, but not not really given his own spotlight. And this episode also ends with Higgins finally after an episode where he's just been biting his tongue and not saying what he feels, his opinion about, Roy, about uh, Coach Beard with his, his girlfriend. Uh, he finally tells him after the game. And Coach Beard, I don't think, took it well. Like, you know, it, it could have been worse, I guess. But Coach Beard seems to be like a level-headed guy. So... I'm hoping that he doesn't turn in he doesn't like turn that that uh the uh denial kind of switch on in his head where it's it's you know he's doesn't want to believe that she's a bad person even though there's like constantly red flags going up you just ignoring those red flags because you think there's and she just doesn't like, it's possible that she's cheating on him. It's possible that there's things going on that he doesn't know. Like, she's not a good... It doesn't. The show's not showing that she's a very good person. Not that it's showing a lot, but, you know. Anyway, uh, great episode from top to bottom. I really loved it. Really happy with Brett Goldstein's uh, writing in this episode. Um, I mean, he's a great character. His voice, you know, the, the Batman-type voice he's doing is feels like it's painful to do i don't know what his real voice sounds like but anyway i really enjoyed this episode one of my favorites uh i mean definitely my favorite so far this season 
Uh, it is episode six of season two, and it's called The Signal. Go watch it. New episodes of The Ray Taylor Show come out every single day. Subscribe on IGTV, YouTube, and everywhere else podcasts are found. Binge the full week ad free over at patreon.com slash inspired disorder. Buy Ray Taylor Show merch over at inspireddisorder.com and follow the show on Instagram at Ray Taylor Show. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Peace out!